Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Heather if you don't already know me and if you do then you probably know what we're going to be doing today. We have another Pokemon advent calendar to unbox. Today it is the super fancy special deluxe edition. It's got lights, it's got sounds, it's got Pokemon figurines and I'm pretty sure it's going to have some cardboard presents too. This calendar is the pop-up and display version. It has 14 figurines two large figurines and 18 accessories. Now, considering that all the accessories so far have been just cardboard, I am a little bit nervous about the fact that there is more cardboard accessories than there are figurines in this calendar, but we're gonna open it up and we're gonna see exactly what it is offering us today. Okay, I'm already hyped. <laughs> I've just done a huge 180. I was really not that excited about opening this calendar because I was just worried there was gonna be nothing but cardboard accessories in here. And actually I've just unpacked it from the plastic wrapping and the back is absolutely insane. Like I'm so excited to open this calendar now. The front of the calendar looks like this. We open the calendar like so. And we've got all the doors behind the cover here. On the back of the door, there is a lovely picture of the Pokemon enjoying Christmas. Let's start with the obvious, door number one. <gasps> I mean, let's just put the calendar down now. It's already peaked, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's Bulbasaur! Oh no, this is gonna be another wrestle to get these figures out of this plastic. <gasps> He's wearing a really cute hat. I have some more fun facts for you for this video. Bulbasaur is actually the third most commonly appearing Pokemon in the cartoon series. Between Ash's Bulbasaur, which featured heavily throughout the first few seasons of the show, and May's Bulbasaur, which was a common sight for an extended period, Bulbasaur is actually only beaten by Meowth and Pikachu. Door number two. Oh, look! Did you know? that if you show Rockruff enough YouTube videos before level 25, it actually won't turn into like and rock, but like and subscribe. Heh. <laughs> Let's take a look at Rockruff in a bit more detail, shall we? You can see that the paint around its muzzle has been applied very haphazardly and is smudged onto its face, giving it the appearance that it's just finished savaging a chocolate pudding of some sort. There are also some brown smudges around its hind legs too, as you can see just here. Door number three. Just down here. We have our first cardboard accessory set. And, oh, it's some wreaths and some stockings. I have to keep the calendar held this way because I can't, oh. Oh. I just realized I could take the, uh, display off at the back and now this is much easier to hold. <laughs> Let's see who is hiding behind door number four. It's Score Bunny! This is the second Score Bunny, right? Well, I mean not from this calendar, but from the calendars that we've opened. The Audacity. This is actually the exact same figure as the previous one we pulled from the other calendar. Omori Shigeru is a game designer for several Pokemon games and in an interview said that the patch over Score Bunny's nose is supposed to resemble those on young, energetic and rambunctious kids in Japan and helps to convey its character. Door number five now. Oh! Oh! oh. Teddy Ursa lets honey soak into its paws so it can lick them all the time. Apparently, according to the Pokedex, every set of paws tastes unique, but who figured that out? Okay, but can we just appreciate the reaction I had to seeing this figure for the first time? Like, genuine shock. This is maybe the worst of these figures I've come across so far. Its face is just so badly damaged with the paint chipped off and glue smeared on its face. At this point, I'm just pretty sure quality control is just not something that these manufacturers even know about. Door number six is a odd shape. I'm gonna guess that there's some cardboard behind here. Yes, I was right, and it is 
some baubles for the tree in the display. And some tiny Bulbasaurs. Door number seven up here in the corner. Hopefully this is gonna be a Pokemon. It is Squirtle! He's got a little snowball. Squirtle and its evolutions are very clearly based on turtles. But with the ability to live for 10,000 years and being in possession of their bushy tails, the Squirtle family may also be based on the Minagame. This is a Japanese legend of a turtle that has a tail made of seaweed and lives for thousands of years. The Minagame is a symbol of long life and happiness, so for everybody that chose Squirtle as their starter, congrats to you! Door number eight I think is also going to be cardboard. Please prove me wrong. Oh my god, it's Vulpix! It's always morbidly fascinating to learn about the Pokemon's different food chains, and unfortunately for the Alolan Vulpix, it's at the bottom. According to Weevil's Pokedex entries, it states that in the Alola region, they actually mostly feed on Alolan Sandshrew and Vulpix. They work together to hunt their prey and then divide it evenly amongst the group. Poor, poor Vulpix. Door number nine now. Oh, it's uh, some, pre some cardboard presents, because we definitely don't have enough of these already. Number 10, right next to number nine. Very cute. The stick that Grookey holds used to be a branch from a forest where troops of Grookey lived, and it has a special power due to being exposed to the energy within Grookey's body. Eleven. Eleven. Eleven, where are you? Oh, eleven is literally so tiny I couldn't even see it on the board, uh, but here it is. I'm gonna guess cardboard. Oh, it's so small! What is it? Okay, so it is cardboard. It's a tiny little gift basket. Now we're gonna go from the smallest door on the advent calendar to one of the biggest, number 12. I don't know if this is gonna be a jumbo Pokemon figurine or if this is just gonna be more cardboard accessories, but let's open it and see. <gasps> oh my goodness. Okay, this is very exciting. <laughs> In the Pokedex, Galarian Ponyta is categorized as a unique horn Pokemon. Unique horn. Unicorn? Unicorn! Get it? I literally can't get her out. She's just gonna have to stay there with her little eye poking out watching me film this. <laughs> Number 13, it's another small door. <gasps> oh, look, it's Togepi. I thought it was gonna be another <laughs> bit of cardboard, but it's an actual Pokemon. Apart from Ho-Oh appearing at the start of the anime, Togepi is the second Pokemon to make an appearance in a region before being officially released. According to legend, whoever can make a sleep in Togepi's stand is bound to have happiness come their way. 14 is also another jumbo sized door, so I'm hoping it's going to be a big Pokemon, but I feel like maybe I've been lulled into a full sense of security. I mean, it's a Pokemon of a sort. <laughs> it's a little rocking horse slash Stantler. <laughs> Number 15 is a tiny door, but we've been tricked before. Oh, look! Why is this Sobble so sad? Probably because he's been trapped in this plastic prison for the last six months. Ugh! Sobble's tears can make others cry and the effect is so powerful that its tears are said to be as potent as 100 onions. Should it feel threatened, Sobble will start bawling and spreading its tears around the area, causing anyone near it to start crying uncontrollably, and it will use this distraction as a means to escape. The next door is also very small. Oh, it's a Morpico! Morpico stores seeds in the pouches on its belly, which are then electrically roasted for later consumption. Unfortunately, Morpico never actually gets full. I've just been looking at the doors on the advent calendar, seeing what's next, and 17 and 18 are both the remaining huge doors on, on here. And I'm kind of a bit perplexed because I would have thought that they would have left a big door to day 24, right? Because it's the last one to open, but I guess not. So now I'm just really intrigued as to kind of 
what we're gonna get behind the rest of these doors because number 24 is just a normal door. Interesting. So let's see what's behind number 17. This is a big door. That's a sleigh that we'll have to put together for the display. And then straight onto the next big door, 18. Oh my gosh, it's Glaceon. Glaceon is one of Eevee's evolutions and emanates a coldness which causes powdery snow to form, which makes it a very popular Pokemon at ski resorts. Coming back to the normal size doors, it is number 19. We just have a very big present behind here. Hmm, Pre-assembled. Number 20, right above it. Oh, it's Charmander in a little hat, how cute. Charmander's hand has an inconsistent number of fingers in its designs. The original sprites designed for Pokemon Red and Green featured three fingers, whilst the artwork drawn based on those sprites had four fingers. This inconsistency actually continues to this day, so next time you see a Charmander, make sure to look if he has three or four fingers. We are in the 20s now. We are counting down to door number 24, but 21 is... I read a very interesting theory about Appleton's design. It may have been inspired by the biblical serpents, sometimes referred to as dragons, one of which persuades Eve to eat from the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge. Most of the time, this fruit is depicted as an apple, hence the design. Appleton has got away pretty lightly in comparison with Teddy Ursa. There are just a few splodges of silver paint on its leg and... Crust? Shell? I don't know, man. Whatever you want to call it. It's not exactly ideal, but at this point, let's face it, it could have been a lot worse. Door number 22, I'm going to assume is cardboard because it's a long, narrow shape. It is! I think there's some cupcakes. They are some very cute Christmas-themed cupcakes. The penultimate door, number 23. Let's see if we get a Pokemon figurine. Hey, it's Eevee! Did you know that the term Eeveelutions was actually coined by a fan? It was only made official after its use in the strategy guide for Pokemon Stadium 2 and then followed by a card game theme deck. And then last but not least, of course we have door number 24. I think we've got a bit of a trend going with who's normally behind this door. I think we're gonna see the star of the show themselves. Oh, oh God, is he dabbing? Yeah, he's dabbing. When Pikachu was first introduced in the manga, he was actually called Jean-Luc Pikachu. This was first mentioned by Ash but then was quickly abandoned in any other iteration of the Pokemon franchise and has never been referred to as since. And there we go. That is the third Pokemon advent calendar we have unboxed so far. Again, overall, I do think that this is a very high price point for what you actually do get from the calendar. However, I have to admit that the display section of the calendar has been my favorite thing to actually come off these calendars so far. I really love the idea of having a little scene that you can set up yourself and have it as a part of your Christmas decorations. I just think there's something really cute about that. I actually really like the fact that it makes little sounds it lights up it just adds extra value for money which i think so far i feel has been missing in the previous calendars that we've unboxed so in my opinion if you're gonna splurge on a pokemon advent calendar if they do a deluxe edition next year with the lights and you know all that kind of stuff i really think it's worth investing in the bigger deluxe edition just because it really does feel like you are getting more value for money what does let this advent calendar down is the damage to the figurines. We're seeing this over and over again where these figures have paint smudges or chips and I just really think for the money you're paying for them, the quality needs to be a lot better. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the calendar. Do you feel like that was worth the money? 
Do you have a favorite Pokemon that we pulled out from the calendar today? Don't forget to also like and subscribe. There's always Pokemon content being produced on this channel. So if you want to be notified of that, you're going to have to subscribe and turn on those notifications, especially if you're really into these advent calendars, because we've got one last one, which like I said, is the Funko Pop advent calendar. But that is all from me today, guys. So I hope you have the most wonderful day. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time. Bye.